We talk a lot about uh, books for young adult readers here on this show, but uh, for the most part, for whatever reason, most of the books that we've talked about have been aimed at girls. Today we switch gears and turn our attention to uh, young boy readers and uh, the Pendragon series and the new series from DJ McHale, which is Morpheus Road, his new book, The Black, book two in the series following, of course, the light and uh, DJ McHale is here. Uh, DJ, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Right so uh, you know, I, as I said, a lot of young adult uh, books are you know, seeing, you know, fantasies and princesses and all this other stuff. But there is a whole genre for for the boys as well. Uh, there is, and for whatever reason, I, I I don't plan to write for boys, but what I write appeals to boys. Hmm. Now, if you wanted to sell a billion books. You'd write for girls, right? But everybody comes up to me and says, "Oh, we're so happy you write for boys, because because boys love your books, and I have reluctant readers, and they love your books." And and I, I think, oh, that's really great. You know, on, on the noble level, that's really great. But then it's just like, yeah, but if girls like my books, I'd be selling a lot more books. But that's okay. I I, I like appealing to boys. That's well, a good and thing. Uh, you know, one of the things that you've done, especially in the, uh, in this book that that we're talking about, is mm. you know, you the boys you have are normal sort of every everyday boys, including you know, not even even though you're you're here. Heroes are, are not uh, the clean-cut, all-American, you know, uh, Hardy Boy type. N not at all. What, what I like to write about, whether it's this or with Pendragon, I like to write about real kids. Um, and, and it always bothers me when I read fantasy or whatever, where, where people accept whatever the weird thing is that's happening to them too easily. Like it's, you're a wizard. Oh, okay, fine, okay, fine. But I, I like to write real kids. Speaking that, of selling that, a, a billion right. books. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, maybe I should have done that. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I like it when, when readers can see themselves in the characters with all their flaws and, and what they're really like, and that they'll care about these kids even if they never get involved in whatever the, the larger-than-life thing is. So therefore, when they care about these characters and then they get involved with the larger-than-life thing, then they're with them on the adventure. And that's I always write that way, because I, I, I want my readers to be playing along, so to speak, and to say, what, what would I do if I was faced with this? And sometimes they agree with the character, sometimes they don't, sometimes they jump ahead, sometimes they jump behind, but, but it's that kind of interactive reading that I, I, I love to try to attain that. And you know, why did you choose to you know, focus your attention on you know, sort of this, this middle, middle teen reader? Uh, you know, obviously, uh, I'm, I'm, there are plenty of adults who, right. who read these books uh, yeah, as sure. well, yeah. but you know, for much of your career, you've actually written stuff, whether it's TV series or uh, you know, movies of the week yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or these books that are aimed at this uh, sort of the, the teen crowd. Well, see, so you're assuming I aimed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just write what I like. Mm -hmm. And you've just, uh, you're, you're the, Peter Pan, you've never grown up? Uh, well, <laughs> maybe, it, it's, or, or at least intellectually, anyway. Uh, <laughs> but I, I write what I think are good stories, and that happens to be the, the crowd that is attracted to it. Uh, when people Have say, you tried to, to, you know, sort of, you know, get out and say, oh, I'm going to write something a little more serious? I, I have. With TV, I have. Mm -hmm. I, I've written a couple of primetime shows and gotten pilot deals and whatnot. And for whatever reason, it just doesn't have the same resonance as this audience. So it's kind of like water seeking its level. <laughs> it's like, these are my peeps. It, it's that... And, and it's not just because of their age, it's because of their sense of fun and adventure. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't get at least one email that says, Dear DJ, I'm 48 years old and I'm a truck driver from so-and-so and I love your books. I'm a big hit with long-distance truck drivers. I hope, they, they're, they, I hope they're reading it on, uh, just listening to it on, uh, exactly. on CD. They put it on the audio <laughs> tapes in their, their cross-country halls and they're like, that Bobby Pendragon, geez, he was going. So I love that stuff. So, it's, so if you have a sense of adventure and a sense of fun, and, and I joked about Harry Potter before, but a lot of that can be attributed, and, and, and J.K. Rowling's can be thanked, because she proved that it not only can kids read more challenging novels, but adults like fun novels. Like, it works both ways that we've kind of funneled into the middle of just good, fun adventure. When it, kids always say, who did you read when you were a kid? Is I would always read the books by, I, I went from Dr. Seuss to Dr. No. <laughs> so so there, there was no middle grade there. So. It, which I read all of Ian Fleming's books 
which are adult books, James Bond, mm -hmm. and I read Alistair MacLean books. So did I. It, 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 I mean, great event, and there's not much difference between Pendragon and an Alistair MacLean story when it comes down to it. T novels today are a little bit, adult novels are a little bit edgier today, and I don't go in that area, but if we talk about the pure adventure, the excitement, the, the mystery, the sleuthing, it's all the same as, as Ian Fleming and, and uh, Alistair MacLean. All right, well, uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about Morpheus Road. This is, uh, as I said, book two of three. Uh, we were first introduced mm -hmm. to these characters in uh, the first book, The Light. The Light. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how, how, how much we can talk about this. Uh, you know, The Light has been out for a while, so I yes. think uh, we're okay to, you know, are we okay to issue uh, I, I, I maybe can, a, I can a spoiler? I can speak in code. Okay. And, and it all makes sense. All right. The, the, the light is where we live, literally. Mm -hmm. The light is the world of the living. And the story's about these two friends, Marshall and Cooper, who are best buddies, two different kinds of guys. Marshall's kind of a nerd who's an artist, and Cooper is, wants to party. And Cooper's always trying to get Marshall to take a chance, and Marshall's always trying to get Cooper to, to be safe. So they're kind of like an odd couple. And it's about how these two guys are being targeted and haunted by a malevolent spirit. The Morpheus Road itself, which is the title of the trilogy, is the road between the living and the dead. So the first book with the light, it is a ghost story. And, and I love ghost stories because I love writing the mysteries of ghost stories. The second book, The Black, goes further along the Morpheus Road into where, in my world, um, your spirit goes right after you die. So when we step into The Black, and there are spirits from all eras, all times, all places that exist in the black, and that's who we interact with in the second book. Now, again, I'm speaking very generally because I don't want to give away the, yes. the big spoilers as to why we're doing that, mm -hmm. but, but what starts as a spooky ghost story becomes much grander as the evil person kind of reveals his hand and we find out what he's really about, and the story just keeps growing larger and larger. And I should say, for those who, who are Pendragon fans, there's actually a pretty big Pendragon connection as we go further into the story. Not so much in the light, a little bit in the mm -hmm. light, but more so in the black, and then in the third book, too, where the stories, they're two different stories, but, but kind of mythically they kind of jive with each other. Mm, all right. Well, uh, you know, uh, from a technical standpoint, when you do create a fantasy uh, world, mm -hmm. how much do you have to plan ahead? Uh, you know, a lot of writers say, you know, I, just, I start with an idea and then, and then I just go with it and I yeah. see where it goes. But when you're creating a fantasy world, there have to be all kinds of, of rules and laws and, and, you know, the physics of, of things. How much of that do you have to create before you've, you've even, uh, you know, started working on the characters? Almost all of it. I, I, I'm not one of those writers that sits down and says, once upon a time and then let my mind, my muse take me. I, I can't because my stories are so well and intricately plotted that I have to know where it's going to go. Look at it this way. It's like writing, when you write a murder mystery, you have to know who done it. So that therefore you can then go back in and lay in the clues that will either direct you towards the killer or away from the killer, whatever you choose to do. So inevitably, and I'll explain with Morpheus Road, it's like I always outline my books. I outline the big arcs, and that's the most fun time for me because it's just it's storytelling. No one's ever going to read it. I don't have to spell correctly. <laughs> I could just say, he does this, he does that. No, he doesn't do that, he does this, he does that. And I arc out the whole thing, and then I'll go back and write the book. And sometimes it takes me away from the outline, so I, I'm not wedded to it. The problem is when you write the first book, I'm pointing to this, but it's the second book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you write the first book, what you just said is that, oh, what I'm writing here, I'm gonna have to live with for two more books. So what happens while I'm outlining the first books, I'm really outlining all three books. So it's like, oh, that really should go in book two. Oh, that should go in book three. Oh, so you kind of have to know where it's all going. And you probably don't do it as m with much detail as you're doing the book you're outlining, but you have to know the big arc of, of where it's all going. Because the last thing I want to do is sit for four months and write a story and hit a dead end and realize, I can't have him do that because, as you said, because the rules that I set up don't make sense anymore, and I've just written 400 pages and I gotta tear it all up. You know, I, I, I can't do that. So I like to 
answer all the big questions ahead of time. I wish uh, George Lucas would have done the same thing. You know, he, he, he claims he knew what uh, he was planning on for uh, all uh, you know all nine movies that he you know, yeah, said. But, but there, there's a lot of uh, things that happen in one, two, and three that uh, you know, did, lead it, to a, mistakes in four, five, and six. That, that's like it's like Lost. So yes. It's like yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, what was going we started, on. We, well, because with love with the TV show, you're never sure if you're going to get canceled, and so uh, you know you don't you know you can't know. Uh, Let's exactly. throw it all to the pilot. And then, wait, we have to explain this polar bear? You know, that's... Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, you are going to be uh, doing uh, a reading and, uh, and signing this evening. Uh, tell people the where and when. I'm going to be at the, the King's English tonight, which is a wonderful bookstore in Salt Lake City at 7 o'clock, which is... Hurry up, get out there. It's, it's almost time to get there. Um, uh, and hopefully, I, I spoke with a couple schools today, so hopefully there's some kids out there if they can convince their parents to bring them. But again, if you're a fan... And also, um, uh, Joe's Library Quilt is going to be there tonight. It's, it's a... Uh, 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 a benefit. They made a quilt, quilt with signatures from all authors. They're going to be there tonight, kind of showing people the quilt. So that's really cool. I, I signed my, my thing for my quilt months ago, and they found out I was going to be in Salt Lake, so they're going to be in the quilt out there tonight. So hopefully it's going to be a, a fun event tonight, 7 at, at the King's English Bookshop. You know, you said you talked uh, to a bunch of kids in school today. You're going to be in a Park City school tomorrow. Do you, is is that the highlight for you when you get to actually talk face to face with you know your target your your peeps as you call them? It, it is the, it exactly is the, the writing is hard. It, there's no question about it. Um, it, it. Once I was at a school and a, and a kid asked me, they said, you know, "What's your favorite thing about being a writer?" And no one's ever asked me that before or since. So I ask, um, and and it took me about eight seconds to realize there are three things I love about being uh, an author. W one is when I first come up with an idea. That's the one. It's just like oh. Wow, that, whether it's the big idea or, or a line of dialogue, that moment of is, is wonderful. The second one is when I write the end on a first draft because writing a first draft is just torture for me. It's just just pull my teeth out. This is it's so hard. But the best time is when someone comes up to me and says, "I loved your book." I, I, it's, it, it does not get better than that. The fact that all this labor that you put into something and somehow on whatever level it moved someone to say, and, or and I hear from kids all the time, whether kids or their parents. A parent will say, you know, my son was such a reluctant reader, and then they found your book series, and now they're reading everything. Or I'll talk to the, the, the boy, and I'll say, so you're reading other things now, too? And they're like, oh, yeah, and I'm moving on to this, that, and the other thing. And that's, that's great. It's a great feeling. And I get that at schools. And I get it at stores, too, because usually when I go to stores, it'll be fans of my books. So, so at schools, I talk about writing in general. At stores, I talk about the books, and that, that's always fun. All right. DJ McHale, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Ari. The book is Morpheus Road, The Black. You can catch DJ McHale tonight at 7 o'clock down at the King's English Bookstore in Salt Lake City. If you'd like a signed copy, we've got one for you right now. Give us a call, 435-649-0045. Back in a moment with a whole lot more.